Hey, hey, you're heading to the garage with Easy Jeezy. Place is a real mess, but I wanted to help out a viewer who left a comment asking about how to set the float level in a Solex carburetor. So, give me <laughs> a couple of minutes to crawl over this mess and I'll see if I can uh, come up with something. Okay, I think I have everything I need out here where you can see it. Um, and again, this is to help somebody that asked a question in my comment section. Is how do you adjust the float level on a Solex carburetor? On these Solex carbs, the fuel inlet valve looks like this. And it comes with different thicknesses of washers underneath it. Uh, I believe the complaint was that the gaskets are getting wet on the outside of the carburetor and it's just flooding over, falling out the spark plugs, something to that effect. I apologize. I don't have it right here, but it's, uh, it's kind of a, a cold day and I wanted to get out here in the garage and uh, make something and post it up. I haven't been feeling real well. I'm... Uh, recuperating from open heart surgery and things are going fairly well um, some people just you know walk in and walk out a new person and everything goes well uh, there was a lot of drama involved in my particular situation for whatever reason seems like that's my life right <laughs> Excitement and drama. <laughs> Never a dull moment. That one's a little tight and it's got the tag on it. Let me put you on the stand here. Oop. And see what we can do here. Alright, now I got two hands. Uh, try to keep these tags. It's really nice when you have an old carburetor and it's got a tag on it. Uh, it says what the type of carburetor is on the side, like a 30, 31, 32, 33, 34 pick carburetor. But it's always nice to have an original tag with more detailed numbers in case you're dealing with a reputable supplier and that means something to them. Okay. You'll take your top off, and right here is where you're going to see that inlet valve. And if you were to, here's where your fuel comes in, the fuel hose, and then there's your inlet valve. And you could maybe take a short piece of clean hose and, and just put it on there and blow in it. So you would loosen this. And what's actually taken place here, instead of having that trick tab that you take on and off, you've got the float, and you can see, hopefully you can see, right here. If you've got a worn spot or a dimple, that's going to allow this to rise if it falls down, if it doesn't shut it off all the way by lifting, that could be your problem and you may have to adjust the float. More often than not, I think you're going to find that dirt or crud gets in there. And most complete kits come with a new inlet valve, so why not use it? And it just sets in here drops down in there you want to never forget your dog bone and have this in a vise or on a level surface or on the car if the car is running and you shut it off and you're curious about what the float level it is you can with the float still in there you lift the top off, 
hopefully a bunch of fuel won't dribble down inside there and you can measure leaving the float in there floating you can measure till you just touch the surface of the fuel and that is how you measure and preset your float level here is a instructions sheet not all carb kits will come with an instruction sheet this is for the 30 through 34 pick 3 and then on this side it'll have the 28 1 2 and the 30 pick 1 and the different years and so on this one we're just going to look at the 34 pick 3 for a little bit more power and performance a lot of people like to go with this carburetor they only used it for a couple of years but it's a very popular replacement carburetor advice and here's some special instructions and down here in the side it'll tell you what size washer came or gaskets came with the different size carburetors for a 34 pick 3 it was a 20 thousandths so there you go a little bit higher float level in that later year what was on this one here oh I know what I wanted to show you right here in the book this shows a, fic a factory tool that's metal that lays across the top of the carburetor body with the top off and they're measuring down to check the fuel level with the float in place be careful when you're working on electricity uh, electricity <laughs> yeah be careful when you're working around electricity also gasoline the two don't combine <laughs> and here it explains the distance from the top of the carburetor to the surface of the fuel should be 19.5 to 20.5 millimeters in 68 and 70 17 to 19 for the 71 models 12 to 14 millimeters um, if the fuel level is too high, use a thicker washer under the float valve. If it is too low, use a thinner washer. Washers are available in thicknesses 20, 31, 40 thousandths. Now I'm switching from metric to SAE. So anyhow, there's nothing in there that you can bend or pry. And if your float is worn out, has a leak in it or a hole, it may just droop down in the fuel and that's going to allow fuel to continuously come in. If you have too high a fuel pressure, maybe you've changed the fuel pump or changed something and now you're having this as a new problem, it, uh, it may be that you have too high of a fuel level. You should be um, definitely below four pounds. There's a little bit higher pressure in this than a high performance dual Weber carburetor setup because you're feeding all four cylinders off of one float bowl whereas with the dual carb setup or the dual dual throat setups like you see on my little tub buggy here the float bowl itself is a lot bigger a lot of people make the mistake when they go to a higher performance engine this is a 2110 and they will put bigger fuel pumps electric fuel pumps they'll maybe put a different size those hoses to these bigger carburetors is usually a little bit larger diameter like a 5 16 whereas sometimes you can get a quarter inch or a five millimeter to work on the stock carburetor but what can what is possible what can happen if you don't replace the line through the tunnel that comes directly from the gas tank or your gas tank screen is clogged blah 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 you can run out of fuel and go lean like let's just say you were running quarter mile runs um, or having wide open throttle races with your friends for extended periods of time all of a sudden it doesn't it stops running well well a lot of people start oh I need a different jet I need the 
change my ignition. Well, sometimes it's just fuel starvation because you've used up the capacity of your fuel system. I hope that makes sense. Um, there's different qualities of gaskets. It's if you're going to go the cheap route, you may get the real thin ones. This looks like a, a fairly thick one, and you want to get the right setup for your particular model because you want to have the proper holes exposed. Now, I'm not going to talk about jetting or any of those things. I just wanted to answer this question primarily about the float level. Uh, my energy levels aren't quite up to par yet, and I had a busy morning, and uh, so I'm just going to keep this video short. Uh, thank you all for your support and your comments, and I try to get back to you. Sometimes if, if, if it's just a, a well wish, I will just put a heart there, so I know that you get that heart sent back to you, and you know that I read your comment. And if you're going to take the time to make a comment, I'm definitely going to take the time to acknowledge that. Um, hope you're having a great day and getting your projects done. It's going to be summer before you know it, and we all want to get out there and enjoy our rides. A neighbor of mine was letting me use their storage shed, and they uh, something's going on. They refinanced their house and stuff, so I had to get my stuff out of their uh, shed and I had no place to put it. I don't have a shed of my own and so here it is and it kind of has uh, created a problem for me but I'll be posting more videos and uh, for right now I'll just try to help folks out and answer your questions. So have a great day. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subbing. Easy Jeezy out.